when someone dies, it's like a lightning strike. If you see it off in the distance, you tell yourself, like, yes, that happens in nature. It becomes closer, you can sometimes feel it through the ground. And it gets really close, so you feel it not only on the ground, but you feel it throughout your body. And this is the way we are, as human beings. We come into this life and we learn pretty quickly that people die. And then it gets closer and closer. Someday it's going to take us. So we have to be prepared. There's a passage in an old Indian epic where someone is confronted with a riddle. If he can't answer the riddle, then he, he's not going to live. And the riddle is, what is one of the most amazing things in the world? And the answer, which the guy gives correctly, is that people know they're going to die, and yet they act as if they don't. There's a passage in the canon where the person has passed away and is brought before Yama, who is the god of the dead, and said, Did you see the Deva messengers? They came to warn you. The guy said, No, I didn't. I was heedless. The Deva messengers were what? A baby, newly born, a sick person, an old person, dead person, a person in jail. These things are there to warn us. The death, the aging illness, and, and the rebirth are all around us. And if we're not prepared, we're going to suffer. It's the heedful people who take this lesson and learn from it and do their best to straighten out their own minds, because the real problem comes from within. In that passage where Ratabala is talking to King Gauravya, he starts with the facts of aging, illness, and death, and then he switches over to craving. And for someone who didn't know the Buddha's teachings, you might wonder, why does he go there? But we know it's because of craving that we keep coming back. In the meantime, we come back. If it's simply craving and the force of craving and the cravings are not under control, you have no idea where you're going to go to try to get your mind under control, get your cravings under control. So at the very least, if you have to be reborn, you're reborn in a place where you can continue the practice. past you try to figure out some way to control your cravings so you don't have to come back at all. In the meantime, the people who are around us who are dying, we want to do what we can for them. While we're alive, it's good to counsel one another with the Dharma. When someone has passed away, you can't talk to them anymore. But you can send the merit that you've done, dedicate that to them. And if they find out and they give their approval, then that's for their well-being. In other words, when someone has died, we're not totally helpless. There are things we can do for them. Spread lots and lots of goodwill. So whether, wherever they may be born, they can find the Dharma again and practice it. That will be for their long-term welfare and happiness. Because this is what the Buddhist teachings are all about, long-term welfare and happiness. But we live in a world where there's aging, illness, and death, so we have to keep our minds on the path, so we know that we're confident that there's a way out. And when, when finally the path comes together, we know that there's a way out. And that what the Buddha said was true. There's nothing truer than his words. We can have confidence in that. And when your confidence is verified, then the mind is not shaken. We can dedicate that merit to those who passed away as well.